say we have to be got a uh, presentation uh, to convince especially people technical people uh, it's called a guide analysis to understand the suicidal phenomena uh, in the farmers very easily it can be graphed and uh, we can present it create a graph like this where we put the enterprise diversity on the farm farm enterprises like cattle like trees like horticulture like pigs whatever it is and here we have uh, total production from the farm the physical production grains or uh, oats or meat or whatever it is here we put uh, benefit cost ratio uh, for every rupee input what he has got and here we put the recyclicity of nutrients in the system which is a sustainability angle now let me say uh, we put uh, we start with a small subsistence farmer before anybody's intervention a subsistence farmer who has got a cow or two or one or two cows and is growing ragi let me say ragi is a crop grain crop now in the subsistence farming they have got two acres only two acres of land let us imagine what happens is cow gives dung to ragi and gives a product which goes into the market milk ragi gives product to cows and gives a product which goes into market the grains okay so now the total production going out let us say out of these two enterprises cows and ragi total production going out for our convenience let us say two tons one ton of milk and one ton of ragi is gone out and let us also argue that every rupee put in will produce uh, two rupees output recent history of nutrients in the subsistence farming system is twice the, the nutrient passed through two enterprises to produce two products now let's put it here that's why the kite it looks like a kite is there subsistence farming on which all of us would like to intervene and see he improves his performance from here if we look at logically how the development program should go we add that to say few more enterprises into the same two acres of land same form of same two acres of land let's say um, we put some goat introduce one or two goats and uh, introduce a few poultry like a poultry and they put some horticulture and put some forestry it is same farming system and now we see how the bio resource flow diagram behaves now huh? now what happens cows give dung to horticulture cows give dung to forestry forestry gives feed to goats ragi gives feed to poultry poultry gives manure to ragi and also to uh, horticulture we require and uh, forestry gives yeah uh, fodder then let's say litter from horticulture goes into uh, feeding the goats or it can directly feed into ragi lot of permutations happen no? so the based of one feeds into another and in the process of one cycle completion one product emerges poultry uh, gives uh, meat and eggs goat gives meat horticulture gives fruit forestry gives let's say poles or uh, biomass so every cycle of nutrients keeps producing some outputs now let's put it back on the kite and see how the kite is looking now so our uh, enterprises are four let us assume 1 2 3 4 5 6 products have given two more tons of uh, biomass the total production has come out it will not go up in the same ratio because there is a give and take so let's say two tons has gone up or maybe one unit of profitability has gone up because there is a cost involved in additional production so more cost little bit of benefit but what really is the gain in the whole system is the kind of nutrient cycling in the system i will just come the arrows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this goes up by 8 times that's a fantastic gain for the whole system now if you put a graph this is a new graph this we call this is a subsistence model this is a sustainability model what is the measure of sustainability is this space gain this is the measure of sustainability of the whole system this in the corner now the drama starts now what really people politicians to play to the gallery bureaucrats and scientists everybody is trying to cheat everybody trying to cheat themselves and also the public and everybody is is this factor we say okay all these things are but lot of effort lot of labor is required lot of marketing is required lot so many things are required for the system 
Let us all convert this into, let us say, bring a canal, put sugar here. And bring sugar in an example, you can put cotton, or you can put tidy, anything. Now, convert this whole thing, it's a very complex system, into a simple system called sugar cane test. Where tractors can be used, hybrid seed can be used, chemical fertilizers can be used from, there is no need for cows to be maintained, because fertilizer comes from a factory. No need for bullocks, because tractor comes in. No, no need for marketing effort, because the sugar government sugar factory comes in. Now, everything is simplified, no, everything is mathematical, everything is management, uh, education based kind of decisions. So they make these decisions, convert let us say 10,000 hectares into sugar cane area. The same area, the same farmer, now he has got water, he does no interest to maintain all these things, but his production and jumps like anything. Because of new found water, new found fertilizer, good uh, tillage because of tractors, his production jumps, farmer is happy. Government also is happy because the total sugar production has gone. What they lost in other cases, they don't count. The sugar, we become subsection in sugar, or paddy, or cotton. And that's how they measure. Farmer is also happy because everything is hunky-dory, you know, things like that. And then profit also jumps in the beginning. First couple of years of this transformation into irrigation-based agriculture, the profits also looks very fine. But what happens here is, sugar cane is a cut and carry crop. Nothing gets cycled in the system. All recycling washed out. So consequently, there is no recycling of nutrient in the system. Sustainability of production suffers. The new kind now looks like, it's an inverted triangle. So this is a new Right. Now, look at this story. A subsistence model, which could have been brought into a sustainability model, has resulted into economically viable model. Economics uh, took over. Then what happens? See, land has got a land fatigue syndrome. Land loses fertility and productivity over a period of time because of over exhaustion of fertility nutrients. If you go paddy, paddy requires only certain elements and keeps on extracting and it becomes empty over a period of time so production drops it comes here it comes here it comes here after some time to sustain this production he has to go on putting more and more inputs more inputs to sustain so consequently his profits keep coming down because he's putting more inputs so the new kite over a period of five years it will become like this then by ten years it becomes like this then slowly it loses the potential and he shrinks in profit it goes down down and down the moment it cuts into this sustainability level, at this level of production and input cars, this is the point of power of suicide. There are no option but to commit suicide because at this level is cost of living has gone up. The children have started going to convent school, started maintaining a bike or car, big bungalows, everything has happened here. To maintain a standard of living, this should have been maintained, which is not possible. So over a period of time, this whole thing shrinks. When it comes to this point, there is no option to sustain this left side and pay back his debts that he has borrowed, he has no option but he can This is the second. This is the explanation. Unless we rectify this quality model of production oriented agriculture, everything is driven by a target. Somebody comes out with a figure in planning commission, okay, next 20 years we need so many billion tons of oil. <laughs> some projection. Based on their own theories. So convert all of Paranjpur into government. Finish. Huh? Then it's gone. Then somebody comes out saying that no, 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 we are importing palm oil from Malaysia. We should start producing ourselves. Then convert all of Badravati Shimoga into palm oil plantations. Finish. We are going to market for palm oil plantations. So, with this kind of a gross uh, macro level influences the policy, drastically affecting the lifestyles of farmers is something that has to be insulating them. And we say multiple production options in rain fed system is the only sort of insulation. They should not be subject to this kind of a drastic shifts just because policy wants it. So there we are standing firm on saying rain fed systems. In rain fed systems, multiple options and perennial production systems where input costs are least and negligible. Then farmer is safe and secure. 